Hello everyone and welcome back to x 11 where I'm going to try and coax the SR-71 past Mach 3 above 80,000 feet. Now I had trouble with that in my previous SR-71 video where I introduced the Sim Acoustics sound pack for the SR-71 which is a payware pack. But since then I've uh, looked online at x and I saw a SR-71 update, a modified ACF file, aircraft file for the plane. And this is by M Goge, uh, M G O U G E. I'll link the relevant page in the video description. And this promised to uh, improve the situation. It notes that the top speed of this aircraft is Mach 3.4 plus, with a maximum altitude of over 80,000 feet, with the distinct suggestion that the modified aircraft file will allow us to get there. So, of course, I backed up my original file, and I want to see if we can manage that and fix the situation that I had last time with the nice sound. Now, I had another problem last time, which was the scenery. And basically, when I hit the border between California and Arizona, uh, the scenery did not want to load anymore. And granted, this is very intense scenery. This is Fort Boy 2's U.S. ortho photos for both California and Arizona I got. So, apparently my system did not want to load both. We are beginning in Arizona, we are in Phoenix and we'll head north. And we'll head to Nevada where I do not have US ortho photos, but I do have ortho 4xp scenery. So we'll see how it does. And I expect that, uh, well, I'll learn something. Hopefully, hopefully I can fly the SR-71 long range without problems, but that's not a guarantee. All right. So here we go. I'll take it from inside the plane this time. I'm not using track IR this time. I wasn't exactly thrilled with all the motions in the video. It's helpful as a pilot, but maybe not as a viewer. Okay. So coming out of afterburner and heading north, uh, other north. <laughs> So Phoenix, as it is in x 11, well I didn't really see what a non-mock flyby was like, let's try that. So that's a non-speed of sound flyby. Maybe I should test the autopilot, seems risky, but let's see. Um, let's get the altitude to 30,000 feet first. Oh, I can tell we're going up too much. Okay, where's my heading bug? Oh, there it is. Okay. Alright, looks like the... Autopilot is functional now. So that right there is Lake Pleasant. Looks pleasant enough. I don't know, the water seems to be lacking reflection. Well, it's a perfectly blue sky with no clouds. So I guess can't expect much out of water in that situation. It is real world weather. So. It just happens to not be very cloudy today. Uh, well, it's Arizona for heaven's sakes. Oh, maybe I should add some more thrust here. Let's go afterburner now. We're at 28,000 feet. So, afterburner flyby without being past the speed of sound. That's a weird angle. How to get that looking right. Alright, back into the cockpit. 
we are past the speed of sound now. We heard a little bit of a crackle for the breaking the sound barrier thing. And why is it not holding 36,000, huh? Okay, well, let me try and flatten out here. And it's shaking a lot though. Interesting. I guess maybe that's added into the craft file. The ACF file, I mean. I guess maybe it won't be uh, needing XP realistic for this sort of thing. I don't know. We're in a transonic region where there's a lot of drag. So the fact that it's shaking a lot isn't completely surprising to me. Once we're past like Mach 1.4 though, it should smooth out a bit. I mean, in the, if that's, if it's a transonic drag issue. Maybe it's just the afterburner. We are past Mach 1.5 now. We're headed straight for Las Vegas, by the way. Should be flying over to Grand Canyon. Is what things look like right now. That's the Colorado River to the left, I think. That's how we sound now. Yeah, I'm not gonna get tired of that. <laughs> Why is the heading not being held? Gosh darn it, it keeps wanting to disengage the heading. Fifty-six thousand feet? Fifty-six thousand feet Mach 2. I'm going down a bit. Let's go keep going up here. Huh. The altitude thing only goes up to sixty thousand. I feel like that's a flaw. <laughs> Shouldn't it be able to go past 60,000? Mach 2.656,900 feet and climbing. Certainly feels better. And now we've smoothed out, obviously. Still on afterburner. Uh, because we're in thinner air, I suppose. We're wobbling, though. Um, I don't recall order ordering this. What? Okay, let me just turn off this stuff. I don't know, the autopilot seems a little bit weird. Mach 3. Well, we've got that much done. Back off of the afterburners a bit. Yeah, I guess maybe the, limiting the autopilot to 60,000 feet was a good idea because it was wobbling basically right when we were approaching 60,000 feet. Don't know what that's about. Let's see the... Status of the sonic boom. Very sharp. And we really need to dial it back. We're at Mach 3.4 now. So yeah, it's definitely performing better. With these new, with this new ACF file. And we should be over uh, well, basically over to Hoover Dam right now. Well, it's right there. You can sort of see it um, at my left wing tip right there. That's the Hoover Dam. And that's Las Vegas. We'll just continue headed in this direction towards Reno. Well, whatever the aircraft file did, it didn't fix the fuel gauge. <laughs> uh, I don't know what this number all on the altimeter is supposed to be doing right here. Seems weird to me. 
Hey, you know what? Let's go to Salt Lake City instead. So, it's looking good for getting to 80,000 feet and Mach 3. So, the next thing to check will be whether I can land it with this new aircraft file. That's a whole other business after all. We are turning very, very slowly. <laughs> you can see this is one of those many hundred nautical mile turns at this rate. I mean, I think I see the salt flats from here, so... You know, we're supposed to be headed over there. It's handling fairly nice at this point. sort of some curvature to the world there. Takes a while to get to Mach 3 with me wiggling about like this. I'm sure I know that the readme for the updated ACF file did give pointers about how to do this much more smoothly. like getting to Mach 3 before crossing a few states. Okay, so... Approaching 80,000 feet. Mach 3. Doesn't seem like I can use the autopilot for this though. I guess I can have it on the vertical speed zero. Hopefully, maybe. I don't know. Okay, it's got the right idea. So we can't set the altimeter, but we can set the vertical speed control. I don't know if it's safe to have heading. Let's find out. Or is it gonna wiggle? Ooh. Okay, heading is wiggly. Forget that. Definitely not advisable. Um. Okay, it's it's done something weird. I think it maxed out something or another. Uh. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Okay, that that's not what I wanted. No. Whatever just happened is not right. Let me slow down a bit. Well, 80,000 feet on Mach 3 happened. Uh, both engines seem to be operating right, but I've got this way leftward thing now. Uh, initially we had a mild rightward issue, and now we have a strong leftward issue. Okay, I'm just doing aileron trim. Okay, I'm not, I'm not sure I'm gonna trust autopilot past a certain point, to be honest. Um, what would that indicator be? What's it trying to warn me about? It's not stalling and it's not G-forces. Maybe angle will attack? Well, that's Salt Lake up, up ahead, so I want to try and land there. It's gonna take quite a lot of U-turns on the descent. Maybe I should just go to Denver or something. Okay, yeah, I think I'm gonna go to Denver. I'm not gonna be able to slow down in any good time to land at Salt Lake City anyway. And the mountains would make for nice scenery. So 
So sorry, Salt Lake City. We're we're gonna head on. Uh, I think it's uh, there's the airport. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Not landing there. Still going too fast. Uh, don't go down. I feel like we basically have to stay at Mach three, otherwise we lose it. Okay, the autopilot seem good on the vertical speed thing, not the, not anything else. Let me try it on the vertical speed thing again. We're at Mach three point, whoa, a little bit fast, three point four, and seventy nine thousand feet because I let it go down accidentally. Well, this is why I need the autopilot's help on the vertical speed. It's, uh, well, it's leaning to the right again. It's doing the same thing. I don't know what that's about. Is it gonna try and break the plane? I don't know. I don't really want it to lean right. But then we don't turn fast enough at this speed to make a huge difference out of it. So Mach 3.18, 79,700 feet, close enough to 80,000 feet. I think this is all pretty convincing. It's really time to land. So outside. The Rockies look rather small from this site. You can barely tell their mountains, you know. All right, I think I'm gonna start descent. We're not that far away from Denver. So if I disengage that, well, I still got that captain thing on. Well, why can't I turn it off? Okay, maybe like that. Okay, now it, it seems okay right now, good. Okay, throttling down. And descending. Yep, a bit of a photo scenery mishap here. That's one thing Fort Boy scenery saves us from. But this is just regular Ortho 4 XP patched up scenery. Not Fort Boy quality. I sure hope that uh, tan block up ahead renders because I'm pretty sure that's where Denver is. And I need that. But it's probably because Denver is so involved that it hasn't loaded it yet. And this is sock scenery over here, this patch. I'll we'll have to check that out. I think it's sort of loading Denver on a rolling basis. Because we can see now part of the tan zone is loaded and on low throttle and on descent let's have a flyby still past the speed of sound Mach 1.5 right now you can see it over to the forward left there And we can actually see the city center pretty well. I mean, maybe we should be landing at Buckley Air Force Base, but which is um, to our right somewhere. Right there, that, that runway is just appearing. That's Buckley Air Force Base. But it'll be interesting to see what Denver International looks like right now. I don't think I've got any particularly special scenery there, I forget. I don't think so. Yeah. I mean, we can see out there, uh, basically this plain white building was not, not even close. Unless it's not loading something. And it is at this point that we need to review the drag chute, which I believe is Z, but no? Okay. Uh, shoot. Deploy adjust and shoot. No, it's X. It's X. Well, there you go. Good thing I checked. 
Landing gear down. Oh, I wonder what it sounded like from inside, actually. Hmm. I don't know. I don't think we could hear much of it over the sound of the engines. Okay, stalling. And then it's got this thing right in front of me. <laughs> that makes it hard to see the runway. That's not the friendliest thing either. I'm sure that's very important for heat purposes, but... Sucks right now. Uh, I guess uh, this is where I need to track IR, because then I can lean to one side or another. And forget the keys for that, because it's not something you often have to do. Okay, I'm way off. Oh, fudge. Oh, ow, ow, ow. Okay, drag shoot. Oh, oh, that wasn't a great landing. But the important thing is, the important thing is, that I made it to Mach 3 and 80,000 feet and managed to land. And it's got some nice, interesting sounds on the wheels touching down and sliding around a bit. Um, so let me just go outside for a sec. The chute is sort of in the runway right now. Let's cut that. Okay, it's gone. And taxi it. Yeah, the buildings do not look particularly good right now. So yeah, there we have it. So it works. And so I think I can safely recommend this particular ACF file to get the SR-71 performing the way it's supposed to. And that makes me happy. Also, the scenery was fine-ish. It took a little while for Denver to load, but you know, um, it is a fairly intense area in general. So with that, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.